All right. I will post the links to the slides and the agenda one more time. And share my screen. All right. Welcome, everybody, to February's Patternfly Community Meeting. I am Nicole, and I am the Patternfly Scrum Master and a React developer on the Patternfly team. And I'll kick us off with the first few of the agenda items, some updates. Um, hopefully, at the, at the end today, we'll have some time for some question and answer. If anyone has any questions that come up during the presentations, you're welcome to ask anything in the chat as we go uh, or save questions for the end if we have time. I think, I think today we'll have time. Uh, so some of the updates. Uh, the first is that uh, if you are a Red Hat employee, uh, this Friday is Red Hat's uh, quarterly day of learning, which is themed around accessibility. And that is a topic which is near and dear to many of the hearts of Patternfly and UXD. So I just want to encourage anybody on this call uh, to participate in the day of learning and engage with the topic of accessibility. Uh, there are a handful of offerings that the day of learning team uh, has posted that might be relevant to members of the Patternfly community. One of them being a challenge, a call to action to try using a screen reader. And if you have a Mac, uh, VoiceOver is the name of the screen reader that, that comes built in with your Mac. And that would be a really a useful uh, tool to experiment with if you've never done so on the day of learning. Uh, there also is a uh, keyboard navigation scavenger hunt, which has been contributed to by members of the Patternfly team as well as two panels that will feature members of the Patternfly team. Uh, one is uh, about sharing my accessible accessibility experience, and one is about ongoing Red Hat accessibility efforts, uh, which will feature myself uh, as I represent Patternfly and our ongoing accessibility efforts. Uh, there is a lot more information on the day of learning for any Red Hat employees, which includes more resources, free courses you can take on the topic, articles, podcasts, you name it, um, and more information about all of the offerings I've talked about already. So that's just my pitch to anybody who did, wasn't aware that some great opportunities coming up this weekend. Um, also, since our last community meeting, we have had one uh, release publish, uh, I guess we call it release or milestone 2022.01 uh, and I was hoping we'd have a second one by today but there will be another release hopefully within the next two days also so keep, keep an eye out for that uh, historically we would walk through most of the release notes kind of on these uh, community meeting calls uh, or at least go through most of the uh, notable updates um, but we're going to we're, we're experimenting with keeping our updates a little bit more higher level and more like highlights. So if you want to look at the release notes for the latest release, they're linked in the slides. Um, and if you have any questions, if you look at those during this meeting, you are welcome to ask in the chat or at the end uh, or reach out after this meeting if you'd like for anything you see on those release notes. Um, oh, I didn't update the dates on this slide. I'm sorry, but uh, there is a public Patternfly community calendar that anybody in or outside of Red Hat is welcome to um, add to their personal calendar to keep them up to date with um, public community events, such as this community meeting. Um, we also have des uh, developer office hours um, and a design share, which both are meetings that take place every three weeks. Um, our next office hours is actually tomorrow. and I'd have to double check, which I think I can do super fast. Our next design share is the following Wednesday, March 2nd. So I'd sorry those slides are not updated. Before I send this out, I'll, I'll be sure to update those. Um, they also include at least a projected release window for each of our uh, th 
each of our releases, which we aim to release every three weeks. So that'll give you a little bit of a preview or some insight into our, our, our cadence there. Um, all right, and that is all of the updates I have for today. Uh, I'm happy to keep this slide up if you'd like, Allison, or I can hand sharing over to you if there's things you wanted to share as well. Uh, no, this slide up is perfect. Awesome. Um, so hi, everyone. I am Allison. I am one of the content designers at Red Hat, um, for those of you who don't know me. Um, so just a couple updates and reminders about um, pattern flying content. Um, for some of you, this might be old news, but for some, it could be new. We have a Twitter and a blog. Um, so give our Twitter a follow and you can stay updated on all things Patternfly. We try to post about every event, updates, um, and some fun facts and more. So uh, give us a follow. And then we also have a blog on Medium um, and we have a lot of different articles. So hopefully there's something out there for everyone. Um, and the best part about the blog is anyone can write one and anyone can contribute. Um, so if you want information on how to contribute, you can check out the Write With Us section on our Medium um, page. And I just listed a couple of our most recent articles. So if any catches your eye, go ahead and go give them um, a look and a read. Um, the next thing is our uh, Streamlining Designs doc initiative across Patternfly is back. Um, so our lovely team started this process about a year ago, but it wasn't able to be finished. Um, so I'm going to pick it back up in the next couple of months and work alongside a lot of great people and um, try to bring this initiative back. Um, so basically, we are so glad Patternfly has so many great contributors. But with that, it creates some inconsistency because everyone's um, putting out their own stuff. So we just want to make sure that uh, this initiative focuses on creating, updating, and maintaining a consistent approach to organizing and documenting the component guidelines um, on Patternfly. Uh, so just wanted to give everyone a heads up. You might be hearing about this more. It's coming back. Um, so be on the lookout in the next several months. Um, and then lastly, it is almost Patterns Fly's birthday. Um, it's in May, but we're preparing. And so if you have any fun facts um, or we're here for any cool milestones or just remember anything um, about Pattern Fly that you think should be shared and celebrated, please let me know. And maybe it'll be featured on our Twitter or blog, um, but feel free to reach out with anything. So that's all, thank you guys. All right, thank you. Let's see, next up, we have a few updates from our core developers. Um, and so I think the first few come from Sarah and I will seed the screen share, I believe. Thank you, I'll share, oops. Share my screen. Okay. Um, for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm Sarah, and I'm one of the HTML and CSS developers working on core. I've worked on Patternfly for uh, on and off part or full time for most of my almost six years at Red Hat. Um, so first, I'm going to talk about the new issues template for core. Um, if you click the new issue button, you will now see a screen allowing you to choose between a bug report and a feature request. Um, these were implemented to try to help um, get a little bit better information in the, um, in the issues that are submitted just to um, remind everyone of the useful information that we will make it easier to uh, implement the fixes or the new features. So um, you'll see a template in here. Nothing's required, but um, a lot of suggestions for um, adding some information and reminding reporters to, to put in things like screenshots or a code pen. That makes it a lot easier to find bugs and um, then be able to fix them. And then I'll show you also the feature request form. This one talks about whether it's an existing or new component, some description, and um, a reminder to include visuals 
for it and any other information. And if you look at the issues that have been submitted, so these, these templates have been up for um, a week or two, and you'll see that some tags are getting added automatically now. So bugs get a bug uh, label and feature gets a feature label. And then there's uh, a needs triage tag that automatically gets added. So then those, um, those issues can be gone through and prioritized and added to the project to, to work on. Uh, I think that's everything on that. Um, the second thing that I was going to talk about is we've added some information about breakpoints. We have a lot of modifiers um, for breakpoints on a lot of our different components and utilities and layouts. Um, but there wasn't one central place that talked about how our breakpoints work and um, giving some information like they are used as min width breakpoints in all except one place. Um, and then specifically what the breakpoints are. So everywhere that we have breakpoint modifiers, there's now a pointer to this documentation, which is under developer resources and then on the global CSS variables page. So there's there's a couple of paragraphs explaining how our breakpoints are used. And then if you go to the filter box for the CSS variables, you can just put in breakpoint and you'll see they come up here so that you have a reference just so you know what widths are um, your breakpoint should be kicking in at. And I think that is everything that I had, unless there are any questions. So I will give it back to Nicole. Awesome. Thank you very much. I got a uh, frantic ping at the beginning of this meeting that Michael Coker had to restart his computer. So if he comes back, he can present a couple more updates from the core side of things. Um, but as of right now, he's not re he's not rejoined us. So we're going to move forward uh, and hope he gets it all sorted out. Um, and we have a few updates uh, from the React repo uh, that Tatani's going to walk us through. So I'll move right along to her. Yeah, hi, good morning. Um, yeah, we just have a couple of um, updates to share. Um, one of them is that the um, the Patternfly build is now working in Windows. Uh, we had a new developer join the team um, and he did not receive a Mac computer. So he was on a Windows PC and found that, you know, the Patternfly did not build. Um, so he made some updates to our workspace. So now you're able to build um, on a Windows PC, which is a great, great fix. Um, and the second update is that um, some investigation work has started with um, pulling in React testing library. Um, Jeff, um, how does his last name pronounce? Puzo. Um, also, a your dev on our team um, started um, investigating React testing library, and it's a uh, actually great timing because. Um, when we move to React 18 in the future, um, Enzyme Adapter is not supported. So um, we, this is something we're committed to changing to. So um, we will be pulling in React Testing Library over the next few months. Um, so we don't have much to share right now, but um, Jeff should be here at the next meeting and he'll be able to share more with you about that. And those are the major updates that we have from React this month. All right, thank you. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, especially about uh, migrating to React 18, I know there's been a lot of discussion from various Red Hat products about wanting to migrate to that as, as soon or shortly after it's released. So we are well aware and investigating all the things that we might need to do to uh, enable that so that we can accommodate uh, products who want to up upgrade. So if you have any questions about that or um, suggestions or insights. If anyone has played with React 18, we would absolutely welcome that. Uh, all right, next up, um, uh, Matt Carano is going to walk us through some of the things that we are working on in the Patternfly world. Hey, thanks, Nicole. Let uh, me share my screen up.
so what we're working on. Um, so on the design side, we have a few uh, uh, sort of large initiatives in progress. Um, uh, first, um, we currently um, are working on some concepts for a uh, visual refresh of pattern fly, which would uh, address uh, updates to the overall look and feel of, um, of, of pattern fly. Pattern fly four has been out there now for, I guess it's almost three years. Um, and uh, while we have no uh, current commitment from a schedule point of view of when we might roll this out, uh, we wanted to try to get ahead of the curve and uh, uh, start looking at um, some uh, new concepts and also have ample time to uh, test those concepts with users and vet them with stakeholders. So if you do have any um, feedback or input on uh, anything uh, visual regarding uh, pattern fly, feel free to reach out. Um, uh, the best thing to be reach out either to myself or Michael Saldonia, who is uh, leading that effort on the visual design side. We've also been looking at um, filter patterns, trying to have a more uh, up-to-date and coherent story about um, what we recommend for filtering and searching across different use cases. Uh, Margaro Ministro is uh, leading up that effort, uh, looking at um, some enhancements to labels and label groups to better support uh, editable label groups. Also, um, we've had um, uh, an ongoing effort to design um, a uh, query builder um, uh, approach for pattern fly, which is something that's been really kind of asked for off and on over the past uh, several years. So. Um, it's very been a very complex problem to uh, solve, and um, we've reached out to many of you about existing use cases, and hopefully we'll be uh, ready to share a completed design soon. If you do have um, any input there, and we have not already uh, uh, talked to you, feel free to reach out about that. And then uh, finally, we've been. Um, uh, working on some improvements to the website. Um, hopefully, uh, you'll see some improvements to the component pages rolling out soon to make it a little easier to access, access the uh, table of contents at uh, various um, screen sizes. We're also looking at the overall information architecture and hopefully able to better uh, organize that and improve the findability of things on the site. Um, and as uh, Nicole mentioned, we do have the design chair meetings, where, which is a place where uh, we will uh, share more details on these, top, these and other topics as they um, come up. All right, the, um, on the development side, uh, these are some of the major um, major new uh, features and enhancements that we're working on. Uh, we've had an ongoing effort to refactor our drop down components to use a composable approach. Those can be seen in the demo section on the website, and uh, we continue to evolve and add to that as we go along uh, on subsequent sprints. Um, we have an open story now for adding an overflow feature to alert groups. This was a request that came from a couple of corners, but basically will prevent sort of uh, post alerts from filling up your uh, the user's workspace uh, and will allow us to uh, queue those up in a more intelligent way. Um, currently looking at our drag and drop library and whether um, uh, we can make some improvements there um, as we continue to uh, add more functionality that requires drag and drop. So we can't make that both more re robust and accessible. And finally, in this uh, current uh, sprint, we're working on a couple of uh, code editor enhancements. Uh, one to uh, introduce the ability to 
uh, allow the editor to um, fit to its container height and also expose uh, hints for using keyboard shortcuts. So those are just some of the major feature requests we're working on now. Uh, we have a, a slew of um, bugs and uh, accessibility issues we're also working on, which are probably too numerous to mention here. Um, you can always visit the uh, issues board for a more complete look at what we're working on by release milestone. And I guess that's about it. If there, unless there are any questions, I will hand it back to Nicole. Okay. All yours, Nicole. Awesome. Uh, let's see, Michael Coker has returned. So I think he had a couple extra core updates he wanted to highlight today. So I'll hand it back to him. Thank you. Just a sec. Share my screen. OK, um, so first off was um, that we, this isn't something that's um, really part of the, the library itself, um, as far as our components and things are concerned. It's more to do with our, the, the way the website presents, the HTML demos, um, the core repository, and the React repository use different languages to build. The demos in core we use handlebars um, because everything is uh, is a static representation of whatever the component states are uh, we use handlebars basically just to manage a templating system for putting things together a little bit easily and in react they use react to build the demos which makes a whole lot of sense and in react they have a component for building a full page demo for uh, presenting something that basically builds out a page a pattern plot page and then puts a demo of whatever the, the thing is that we're showing inside of the page content. And in core, we kind of had this sort of dispersed here and there, but um, we noticed that a lot of our demos looked kind of inconsistent and for no particular reason, uh, just the, they were built at different times and things like that. And so um, in this, um, this current uh, release that we're uh, aiming for, I've built out a common set of template uh, of page templates uh, in the, the handlebars um, templates to, to build out just a basic page. And it's it it's based off of the component that the React uh, team uses for their demos. And so hopefully, um, except in demos where we need to deviate from the overall basic Chrome presentation of a page, um, those should be consistent across uh, the HTML demos, and also those should be uh, pretty consistent, if not uh, the same, as the uh, React demos uh, to match the component that they are using for that. And so just as a, a, a little explanation there, it's just uh, anytime you go to HTML demos and then you click on something that's full page, it's this basic page. And so um, you won't see it there yet, but hopefully you'll You'll see uh, some of it in the upcoming release. Um, it's a pretty big effort because we have quite a few demos. Um, and so some of them were updated and we're going to continue to update those uh, this release as well. And that's probably that's probably uh, where we'll end it. I think we'll be able to get that done this release. And so you'll see uh, not this upcoming release, but the release after that, you should see all the demos in the uh, HTML demos tabs be updated to a consistent uh, page crawl. And then um, another cool enhancement that we added um, that I figure I'd highlight here because it's a little bit tricky and it could get uh, kind of lost. And I think it would be great to call out for folks. Uh, I imagine it's a somewhat common use case is that um, with a button component, we have these progress buttons that where you can click a button and it shows a progress spinner and then you can hide the progress spinner or show an icon in its place or whatever. And so we had a, a user uh, ask, how can you do this with a plain button? Because they just have like a plain action, right? It's like, it's like this, uh, this action you can see here with the upload button. Um, and they wanted to replace that with the spinner and have that basically give the same uh, progress loading indication. And it's not entirely intuitive uh, for how to do that. 
uh, because for a number of factors. First, the uh, progress spinner is a is is a static size based off of the size that you've chosen. It doesn't. It's not a dynamic kind of thing. And icons are all different sizes um, depending on what icon set you're using. We have a different uh, web font icon set in Core that uses a mix of Font Awesome and custom built icons. The React React icons package uses SVGs, and for the most part, those are all the same size. In fact, they are because it draws it out as like a one m one m box. But you can customize that size, and so maybe you've got like a large icon, and you want to put a spinner inside of it. The spinner sizes don't match. I'm pretty sure the spinner by itself doesn't match either of those icon sizes natively, and so. Um, one feature of a progress loader is you don't really want there to be a layout shift. You kind of want the button to disappear, progress to appear, and the whatever icon or whatever, uh, whatever you want to show afterwards to reappear, and it look like a, a smooth transition. And so um, we have this now here. It's a plain button. You can just, uh, you know, I think it's, I forget. Oh, so this actually hasn't been built in React yet. And so I was trying to think of what the prop is. I think it's like is loading or something like that, but hasn't hasn't been built in React yet. Um, this is live in the HTML side if you were interested in adding this kind of thing in the interim. Um, but basically what we're doing is uh, we're, we're taking a button, placing an icon inside of it, and allowing that icon to draw the layout for the button. Um, and then when it's in the loading state, we visually hide the, the icon that is being replaced with a spinner but we still allow it to take out its take up its layout, and so it still defines the overall dimensions of the the box um, where the icon was, even though it's not visible. And then we place the spinner in the center of that box and uh, tell the spinner not to be able to redefine or change the layout of the button at all. And so it's like the spinner just kind of displays on top. It's not going to shift the button size at all. The button's still defined by the size of the icon, and then. Uh, once it's finished, we just remove that spinner and show the the icon, the original icon again. So, anyways, that's in there. It's in the in the um, HTML section of the the button if you want to check it out. And then hopefully we'll have that in the React component soon. And that was it. Yeah, I believe that the release that should go out in the next couple of days will include the React implementation implementation of that button. So everyone can be excited for that. Awesome. Um, all right. Is there any other questions anybody has? Um, we have ample opportunity to answer any questions. All right. Uh, when will we have a React 18 version? Um, I don't know exactly an answer to that, but maybe if there is any sort of timeline for the delivery, Tatani might know, maybe? <laughs> Tatani, do you know? Um, it won't be anytime soon. It's, you know, um, it's kind of dependent on when products are willing to, to pull um, that in. But right now we're in the investigation phases so we started to um to investigate pulling that into to pattern fly and getting out to work with our um with our repo so we're currently working on that and um it's only in beta now as dan's putting out in the chat yes it will not be before it's promoted out of beta yeah. and i'll just add to that um I think part of the work that we're doing now too is to uh, determine how we can potentially unblock any products we want to test React 18. So just to either know that pulling in Patternfly won't greatly break them if they're if they're just testing out React 18, or at least to know um, you know Patternfly should mostly work. But here's a list of gotchas that we're like Tatani said we're looking into on the side. Um, so it's kind of a two-step process of any products who are interested in in looking at React 18, you know, kind of letting them know how it's going to jive with Patternfly, and and then for us, kind of taking that list of gotchas and looking into that behind the scenes, so we can start making some progress there. Yes, if any products uh, have 
dates, deadlines, goals for this kind of upgrade, absolutely talk to us about it um, so we can stay aware and be in conversation. All right, any other questions? I have um, some links at the end of this slide deck. Um, one is to join the pattern fly mailing list, which is where we send out periodic um, grander scale updates, um, as well as reminders for some of these community meetings. Um, and so if you're not part of that mailing list, absolutely, I recommend signing up. We also have a link here to adding the pattern fly community calendar to your personal calendar if you want to stay up to date on any adjustments that might be made or updates that might be made to these events. Um, and also, if you ever have any questions about these community meetings or pattern fly in general, I guess, <laughs> you can add, feel free to email me. Uh, if you'd love to present, we'd love to have presentations from anybody incorporating pattern fly into their products, products or projects. Um, so if you have any Thing you would you think the pattern fly community at large would be interested in seeing or uh, chatting about, let me know. We can incorporate that into a future meeting. Um, and I think that's it. So I will send out the links, the, the slides with all the links, as well as a recording of today's meeting shortly after this. Um, tomorrow is the development office hours. So if you have any questions for the React or core devs, um, if you have any issues that you've been uh, trying to work through in the Patternfly code, uh, that's a great place to discuss them, to get answers, to start conversations, to uh, move things up in priority. Maybe if if you wish they would be higher in priority, that's a good place to wave wave some flags. Um, yeah, development office hours tomorrow, same time as this, uh, 11 a.m. Eastern, and um, and the day of learning is on Friday. So I hope everybody participates. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you next month. Thank you.